July 4th, 1968, broke my back. Doctors did not find any reason why I wasn't walking after surgery. I would love to know what can improve me to be able to walk again. Mm -hmm. Although she had the spinal injury, she should be able to walk. My curiosity was to find out what sustained the paralysis. I could actually feel an electrical charge that went straight down my legs. My body, I can't believe what's going on right now. Curses are negative entities created by a human psyche. I felt like I was awakening what was dormant. Well, two people are actually draining your physical energy. I remember what it feels like to move in the air like that, but still not knowing what was going on. July 4th, 1968, we were leaving New York City to go to uh, visit some family in St. Louis, Missouri. We had eight people in a six-passenger car, and we had a blowout. The car went out of control, and I was thrown out of the car and uh, broke my back. The doctor who... Uh, put the steel rods in my spine, was expecting me to walk after surgery. Time goes by, nothing happened. They did not find any reason why I wasn't walking after surgery. I always was an artist. I was expecting to go to art school. Everything stops as far as my dreams. Having small children and being in a wheelchair for my mother was also pretty scary because there were lots of things that, that she felt she wouldn't be able to do. I think that's why I had such high anxiety when I was raising my kids because of my physical limitation, you know. And I mean, it's more than just, I think, a physical thing. It's, um, it's an identity, it's a way of like being seen and seeing oneself. I would love to walk again. It is just, I would love to do it. Even if I had less than a year to experience what it would be like again to feel my feet on the ground independently and to my own, then I would take that. The courting technique began, I would say, when I was a young boy, when I would look at people. I mean, I say, see the same physical features that you do when you look at someone, but I also notice that people have what I would call textures or properties. One night, my parents were having a social event at our home, and a gentleman came that I didn't recognize, and he had one of these uh, textural properties. Along with it, there was a concern, and shortly after, I overheard my parents saying that this man had just found out he'd been diagnosed with lung cancer. And that was really when I began to realize, well, perhaps what I notice when I see people, these textural properties relate to human biology. I work with healthcare providers and assisting them working with their patients using only this observation-based technique. In conventional medicine, we do make visual assessments. The cordum technique takes other visual signs and you use that part of your intuitive sense to make deeper connections. I've never spoken to John about his technique. I got excited when I had heard about it. And so I went to see John Cordham to find out why I wasn't walking. Okay. If anything, I've learned about my experience in working with this technique is it's about perception and action. It's about your senses and action. And if you can explore those without limitations or constraints, if you let yourself just go wide open, that, that you will be tremendously empowered as a human being. In terms of your purpose for being here today, what is it you would like to know? Uh, well, what, um, my curiosity was to find out what sustained the paralysis that at the time that I injured my spine, um, they were expecting me to walk after surgery, and I didn't. The way uh, we do the assessment is by noticing different characteristics that we notice in, in your face. Conventional medicine, they'll speak to the language of science. I am speaking to the language of the body. When I was communicating with her body and what it was telling me, I noticed she started reporting, feeling some physiological sensations, as though her body was pinging her. Now I'm feeling something. This is interesting. Your spine? I could actually sense and feel there was something there. There's an electrical charge that went straight down my legs. My body, I can't believe what's going on right now. What if you ask your spine what it's hiding? I asked my spine, what was it hiding? And uh, I, I heard the word fear. I just want to cry right now. It's okay. My whole body's shaking. 
And there's this, now this, like, hot feeling on my feet, like they're on fire. I've never felt that before. I felt like I was awakening what was dormant. This is really strange, this vigil I'm getting. It's an old, 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 old man. I'm asking if there's anything I have done. And he said, not now. This isn't yours, but it's a secret. I asked him, why am I carrying it? It's because of, of an agreement. I made an agreement. It, I was like, why can't I know what this is? Well, this is, like a, this is like a deep, dark, hidden secret. That's what it's saying, because you're essentially gaining trust with self. What is clarified for me is that there's something hidden, protected, actually, inside of me, very deep, and that that I'll find it out. For Providencia, that she's recognizing you know, that something's been in the way and something's been preventing her from healing that's not of a physiological, neurological reason. I think that's really good work for today. Yeah. <laughs> wow. The recognition that she may somehow be playing a role in sustaining her inability to walk is monumental. The question that came out, you know, why can't I walk, was very externally focused for her. And until someone's able to really see that kind of internal aspect of their disease, it's very difficult to, to heal from it. What he found in the probe, I was like, oh no, how do I touch that, you know? That by working with someone, they could perhaps present her with the blind spot and furthermore, you know, really get into the details. I think that that'd be very beneficial in moving her forward in her recovery of health. I went to see John Cordham, what he found in the probe. I was like, oh no, how do I touch that, you know? But I did get the sense that I needed to lift and remove it. And then all of a sudden, Tarmo comes into my life. My name is Tarmo, I'm from Estonia. Estonia is a teeny little country on the Baltic and uh, shamanism and healing arts uh, has been the tradition of many thousands of years. I don't call myself a healer, really. Uh, I call myself rather a plumber. I'm removing from people unnecessary garbage from their system that is contaminating their own potential. I had no idea what I was going to experience in Tama. I was open and ready to receive and experience whatever he said. It's a journey that I felt had to happen, and so I'm here. She has a really interested and complicated karmic past. See, your lifeline mm -hmm. on both hands mm -hmm. breaks and continues. Mm -hmm. Means rebirth during a lifetime. When I was having the session with Tomo, I had the sense that I, I was here to set something right. Your last incarnation, you died at the age of 14. You were murdered. When people die unexpectedly, they tend to take that unfinished incarnation with them into their next incarnation in order to be completed. When did this thing happen to you, this accident? Uh, July 4th, 1968. I was 14. 14. Interesting. Yes. 14. <laughs> so, <clears throat> in addition to this past life karma that was inside you, bothering the hell out of you, uh, you also have two curses. There are two people are actually draining your physical energy. Both male. Who are they? I don't know. This could also be people who leave negative imprint. I, I don't know. I have a boyfriend. What's his name? Um, Todd. Stored on the voice chakra, well, no. Okay, my son Miguel. Is Miguel on the voice chakra, well, no. Woody? Is Woody on the bell? Yes. Oi. Yeah. <laughs> That's my ex-husband. Ah. Huh. Let's see who's the other one. I just, I want to say Mario. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's Mario. Mario is on your first eye. Um, Mario, my brother, he passed away. He's still on your first eye. Uh, it's kind of like obscuring your looking glass. Mario was driving the car at the time. 
When I was in the hospital, I would say, I don't want him in the room. I remember that. But I never connected dots. Because you've had like six incarnations together with him. Really? Yeah. And interestingly, the reason why you have this curse uh -huh. is that many incarnations ago, it was you who was cursed. And now many incarnations later, it has come back to you again. Mm. So let's begin, we begin from the curses. We're going to remove that as the first thing. Thank you. When he mentions the curse my brother Mario placed on me, it just made sense to me. And in a deep place. Interesting, I, I, I'm not allowed to remove it. It says I can, but I'm not allowed. There's some karmic reason why you have it there. Hmm. Everything has a reason always. So what you need to do right now in your mind, you need to address the person who created that curse for you. Okay. And you must say, forgive me right. for giving you the reason to curse me. So let's begin. All I did was to apologize for holding on to, blaming him for being the driver of the car at the time of the accident. When I opened up my heart and I asked for forgiveness, all of a sudden, these tears came down my face. She enabled me to remove that curse because before that I had no permission to touch it. <coughs> oh. After receiving Tomo's work, I felt um, satisfied. That was really uh, uh, relief. Yeah, your energy is growing like crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm getting cold. You may feel all kinds of things, what extremes. Just your body will start readjusting to its real norm. It's going to be great. I have to remember a belief that there is no place to hide. Eventually, the tr truth will come out. I'm pretty sure that after some physical therapy now because the damage has been so old, uh, she will do really well. My experience with that session with Tomo was a catalyst. You don't get away with things. You, you, you come back to make things right. You come back to, you know, to work things out. For some people, it's easier to remain with their illness rather than go through the pain that they will need to experience. For Providencia, she realized she couldn't afford not to go through that pain anymore. So I have forgiven my brother for driving the car during this accident. It wasn't his fault. At that point, it was like an opening happening in me of awareness. I felt freer. Right after Provi went to the shamanic healer, the biggest thing that I noticed is just the emotions, a lot of emotions coming out of her. There's definitely been some signs that her body is even coming back more to life. Oh, yeah, much better. Right now, I'm just um, reacclimating to a different lifestyle and structure. I'm really evaluating and reassessing everything. I'm working out a lot. It's a major shift that I'm going through. And also self-development. A lot of internal work is going on. Zen uprooting from a place that I've lived for 30 years and deepening myself into a relationship. We met about four years ago and we are living here together. I think she's a, a wonderful woman. I think one of the things I admire most about her is just her determination to be independent, her determination to be self-sufficient. Todd is a hugely supportive, um, loving presence in her life. He accommodated me, and so the transition because of him having no issues with that. And I said, you know, Todd, anybody else, you could just walk right through the door. So he goes, yeah, but it's not, it wouldn't be you. Right, go ahead. Uh, one of the things she had mentioned in our conversations is that she always wanted to ride a motorcycle but couldn't. You ready? Yep, yep, yep. 
So I actually made some adapters to my motorcycle. This is a nice place to come home to. Just to come to this natural setting is very soothing for my soul. It's just something very um, comforting. I think taking the next step makes sense. Um, she should pursue whatever, whatever options there are. She's going to be going down to the rehab hospital. It's exciting to go down there and talk to somebody and maybe they can offer something more. There's always more to learn. I haven't had a physician in the field of rehab do a thorough or want to even look at me at this point to see what I can do. Maybe she'll be able to have more feeling in her legs or more control and possibly someday be able to walk. Hi. Hi. I'm Dr. Stampus. Hi, Dr. Stampus. I'm Toby. Toby. Great to meet you. I am a spinal cord injury physician. My interest is in helping those with chronic spinal cord injury. When I initially see a patient for the first time, a lot of my approach to them will depend upon the physical exam. But the tone feels good. good. You have the reflexes of a teenager. <laughs> Not much reflexes down here. No, but I can feel you. Can you try to do this type of movement? Just try as hard as you can. Relax. Good. You got something there. I can feel a lot of firing off, you know? Mm -hmm. That's all good stuff, though. Yeah. Can you try to point your foot down? That's great. No, I saw it. Just to hear you say, I saw it, knowing that I can feel it, is like, I'm happy, <laughs> you know? Uh, my first impression of Providencia was, yeah, this is an ideal patient because she seems motivated, she's healthy, she doesn't have pain, which is a blessing. I mean, she's got all the positives for a perfect patient. So really strong in, in the upper extremities, and we knew this. Uh, in the lower extremities, you do have a little bit of strength, that's a one, because you have motor down at the very bottom mm -hmm. at your calf muscle, right. and also have sensory at the very bottom, you're an incomplete injury. The things that we can do to help you improve, if you're interested, is to help increase your range of motion. So there is room for repair. The way I look at how my body has improved, it's what's been potentially or waiting to be tapped into. I'm really anxious and curious myself. What more can I get back? I'm never going to know if I don't apply myself. There is a real possibility for you to, to significantly improve. She does need to really give herself that, that boot camp type of push where she just completely devotes herself to her recovery. So I am optimistic. You know, I got nothing to lose. I got something to gain, but I have nothing to lose. I just, I felt, I felt like I wanted to jump up and just click my heels in midair, you know? It just felt like, wow. All of me shaking, down to someplace deep in me, is just vibrating. Well, I can't tell you that I can reach this far back, then. Uh, don't look, don't look. Yeah, because I want it to happen all the time. Yeah. What's the next phase of my life, you know? And I really feel that's for me. I find that there's this core that wants to move, you know, and, and dance. I can feel my legs. I don't know how to say it. I can, I'm going, oh, wow. I, I can feel it. It's amazing. The, this has been a very valuable time for me. My mother has tried lots of different things to work on her walking again. But I think there definitely was something that was holding her back. And I think the only thing that holds people back in general is fear. She's changed a lot, she's grown. Even though we don't know what's ahead of us, we know we have to go in a certain direction. We need to apply ourselves in that direction. It doesn't necessarily mean that what we're going after is going to be the outcome, but that opportunities will afford themselves that wouldn't necessarily make themselves available if we just wished it or thought about it. And I still don't know what's ahead. I love that, I haven't a clue. But I'm willing to find out. I have a full body. And I have a full life.